How a vaccine is made is very important. How it's made determines what type it is, and the type of a vaccine ultimately determines its safety, efficacy, or effectiveness, and what type of follow-up you will need once the vaccine is administered. Max, you tell me how you think vaccines are made. All right, perfect. There are witches that come out at night and they use ancient secrets to brew potions that cause vaccines to be made. Okay, um, Debbie, uh, you tell me how you think vaccines are made. Okay, Dr. Des, I know the perfect way they make vaccines. Okay, there is this doctor, we'll say Dr. Jekyll, and he has an idea for a vaccine, but he steals the serum, and then his evil side comes out. We'll call him Mr. Hyde. And then his evil side decides he's going to make the formula so everyone is a zombie like him, and then he's going to rule the world. Both of you are highly imaginative, and while thinking out of the box is a good trait for many scientists, your ideas are a little off the mark. Let me tell you what really happens. There are teams of scientists, physicians, clinicians, and yes, patients who work to help form vaccines. From the time there is a new need for a vaccine, physicians and clinicians present findings to scientists who then go and work to try to figure out the genetic components of a pathogen in order to find the best strategies to fight this pathogen on a genetic and molecular level. Scientists understand that vaccines are a less dangerous substitute for a pathogen that elicits the response of the immune system. Scientists have to answer then what trait does a good vaccine substitute make? A good vaccine must retain pants or pathogen-associated molecular patterns so that the innate immune system is engaged. They have to make the vaccine strong enough to make a potent adaptive immune response. And scientists have to identify and neutralize virulent parts of an organism that is a potential vaccine candidate to ensure patient safety. <laughs> the part of an organism that destroys a host's defenses as it attaches to a host cell. The part that reproduces itself in a host cell. The part that weakens a host by exploiting the host cellular machinery. The part that makes you sick. There are several types of vaccines. Type 1 is the inactivated type. The pathogens that compose these vaccines are killed or inactivated before they are administered to patients. So in other words, they're dead. There are a variety of ways to kill these pathogens. For instance, they can be killed through chemicals like formaldehyde or killed through heat. These vaccines are among the weaker ones because while they do engage the innate immune system because they retain PAMPs, they do not engage the adaptive immune system as well because the organism is dead and therefore the immune system does not mount as great a fight. The positives of these inactivated vaccines are that dead cells cannot revert to live pathogen and because of this, the risk of infection to a patient is minimal. The negative is that because these cells are dead, they don't invoke a strong immune response. Therefore, a booster shot will be needed. The second type of vaccine, or type 2, is live attenuated. The concept behind live attenuated vaccine is quite simple. First, unlike inactivated vaccine, the pathogen that the live attenuated vaccine is based on is actually kept alive. However, the virulent parts of the pathogen are identified and removed, thus changing the pathogen from a virulent to a non-virulent vaccine candidate. The most common techniques to do this involve taking an organism's DNA and sequencing it. In other words, you are actually trying to identify every chemical group on a DNA backbone. Once you've identified every sequence, you then are able to see which part of an organism is actually quite dangerous to humans and which parts are essential to keep on that organism in order to elicit an immune response. You isolate the parts of an organism that are virulent, you remove them, you replace the DNA, and you grow or 
Because live attenuated vaccine engages both the innate immune system through its retention of PAMPs and the adaptive immune system by the vaccine remaining alive, live attenuated vaccine is a much stronger vaccine candidate. The positives of live attenuated vaccine is that the live cells the vaccine is based on can invoke a strong immune response. And because of this response, you normally will not need a booster. The negative, however, is that live cells can always revert back to pathogen. And therefore, with live attenuated vaccine, there's always a chance of infection. There is a third type of vaccine that uses the component of a pathogen to remove the viral part. The idea is that some bacteria have a carbohydrate coating and some viruses have surface proteins that stimulate an immune response. These bacterial carbohydrate groups or surface viral protein can be chemically removed from the virulent parts of an organism. Because you are only using a component of live vaccine, you are engaging the innate immune system very strongly through a PAMP, but not engaging the adaptive immune system as fully, and therefore these vaccines are weaker. The positive of component-based vaccine is that this type of vaccine cannot revert to live pathogen, therefore the risk of infection is minimal. The negative is that it cannot invoke a strong immune response. A booster may be required. The vaccine strength of the live attenuated is much stronger than the inactive and component-based vaccines. However, the strength of the live attenuated vaccine comes with more concern about safety as far as reverting to a live pathogenic agent. Therefore, scientists are always looking for vaccines with the strength of a live attenuated vaccine with the safety of an inactivated or component-based vaccine. And out of that, there's a new generation of the vaccine which brings us to type 4 DNA and RNA vaccines. While DNA and RNA vaccines are still in the developmental stage, the idea of DNA and RNA vaccination is that you create a process for protecting against disease by injecting a patient with genetically engineered DNA or RNA so that cells directly produce an antigen. This is a breakthrough because you are engaging both the innate and adaptive immune systems by creating a wide range of immune response. So you see WMX, the process of making vaccines and the people who make them are not strange. Basically, everyone is working around the important concepts of how your immune system works because basically it is all your immunity <laughs> thank god that the brothers on the rise now Woo! endless celebrations all of my